Please listen carefully. Hello, universe. Welcome to the Optimist Daily Update. I'm Summers McKay. And I'm Christy Jansen, and we are part of the team behind the Optimist Daily, making solutions the news. We bring you reader-funded solutions news every day in order to change the tenor of news media, social media, and the direction of your day to help us all get focused on solutions. Seven days a week, we publish positive news stories written by award-winning journalists and delivered online through our social channels to your inbox. And also, we are sharing these solutions in a commute-worthy, walk-worthy, home office-worthy, if the internet lets us, worthy podcast. Today is Thursday, the 28th of April, 2022. Hello, Christy. Hi, Summers. <laughs> we have had kind of fits and starts with our recording today. Web inconsistencies, ups and downs, yeah. stops and starts. So hopefully the, the recording itself will go smoothly. I know. Hopefully. Hopefully everyone will get to hear their solutions today. How, how's your day gone so far today? Anything to report on this happy Thursday? Nothing out of the ordinary. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> Yeah, I likewise have nothing to report. I think I felt very vulnerable after yesterday's podcast with all of my sharing. And um, it was funny. And I'm like waiting with bated breath for my father to call me and chastise me for considering Botox. (laughs) Other than that, I'm uh, I'm feeling kind of optimistic. I'm happy. We are closing down on May and it's going to be warm and beautiful. And, you know, good things are happening ahead. Mother's Day is coming up. We're all writing about our favorite animals. It's good stuff. Right now, Christy, I'm feeling very focused on beautifulness outside. And this morning when I was driving my daughter to school, my favorite neighbor was out there with his litter picker upper walking along the (laughs) country road. And as you know, I keep a litter picker upper in my car as well. I I didn't I didn't know that actually. Oh, I thought you did. No, I didn't realize that. I was inspired by this guy who I drive by every day when I take Brennan to school. (laughs) And he's out there with this like his headphones. He has like big old headphones and he's walking around with a bag and a litter picker upper. And that's literally his David Sedaris style morning walk, right? Yeah. (laughs) So but I, I was inspired by him. And so I got one and I have one that's in my car. So if I ever see litter and I have a few minutes, I can go pick it up. And then I also have one by my front door. So that is why this headline is the headline for me. Okay, let's hear it. All right. Five cities celebrating the earth by plogging. What in the world is plogging? Yeah, you're not the only one, but in case you haven't heard... Plogging combines physical exercise and cleaning up your town and environment. (laughs) It started in Sweden, plogging being portmanteau of the Swedish phrase plaka uppa, meaning to pick up and jogging. And the craze has caught on around the world. There are five cities that we have noted that celebrated Earth and Earth Day by hosting public plogging events. In Yinchuan, China, plogging is picking up across China with many seeing it as not only a civic duty, but also a personal responsibility and perhaps nowhere more so than in Yinchuan. This city of almost 3 million people has seen plogging take off as a big trend, especially among the city's youth. The organizers of the Earth Day plogging are quoted as saying it's great fun to see children rushing to pick up garbage. A plogging mega event has been running for four consecutive years in China. Plogging 2021 had over 25,880 participants in more than 256 cities. Collect more than three tons of trash. Yes. It's a lot of pizza. We've got Boise, Idaho that has a nonprofit named Boise Nice. You guessed it. Keeping Boise polite, pleasant, and nice. And this Earth Day they put on a citywide plog <laughs> to clean up areas within the city. Now, when you're doing this, do you have to actually like jog in place as you're scooping the trash? I mean, there's walkers. There's, you know, it's like mall walkers and mall joggers and ploggers. Okay, and yeah. you could be, you know, riding a bicycle to one place and plogging, you know, picking up trash in the area and then riding bicycle to another place. Anywhere in Seoul, South Korea, Seoul Elementary students from Dulwich College in Seoul gathered on the banks of the Han River on Earth Day and plogged with their parents and teachers and filled up 40 bags of trash in the Bampo area near the river. Burlington, Vermont. Good job, Burlington. There's an outdoor sports store called 
Be a Raven, and they hosted an event that leaned into the theme of Swedish culture, offering Swedish fika, coffees and treats, motivating more Vermonters to plog with a raffle at the end of the day for national park passes. And last but not least, Janesville, Wisconsin, encouraged the town on radio to celebrate Earth Day weekend by taking up plogging and uh, using the hashtag Janesville plogging to win prizes from downtown businesses, taking pictures of themselves on social plogging. So I love this. I think everyone should continue to plog and pick up trash wherever you see it and be good stewards of this beautiful earth. And it sounds like it's a pretty fun thing to do together as a community. I know we have cleanup days in my neighborhood, which I honestly never participated in. <laughs> now, so now I'm feeling guilty because they have like, you know, one Saturday a month, Galita downtown. It's like, come join us to clean up our town. And that's what our guest tomorrow on the Optimist Daily Update is going to talk about. She is going to be sharing with us stories on how to just get active and how to just volunteer. So show up for your local plug, everybody. <laughs> But make sure you're healthy on your way there by way of eating food that makes you feel better. Okay. Well, then I guess that's a handoff to me with my headline that I'm talking about today because it answers some questions that I have been wondering and I am so thrilled to be able to share this information with the world. But the headline reads, your questions about adaptogens answered. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm always seeing brands now talking about the adaptogens they have in them. There's a brand of kombucha that I drink that talks about the adaptogens embodied in them. Ticino, which you and I are both big fans of, talks a lot about the adaptogens in their tea, coffee products, which are all wonderful things. Mm -hmm. But what does it mean? Like, what is adaptogenic? (laughs) What is adaptogenic? So first of all, adaptogen is a word that means something that helps your body adapt to stress, fatigue, anxiety, to help move it away from those kinds of feeling slash physical states that you find in the environment. So adaptogens are active ingredients that are found in particular plants and mushrooms that influence how your body deals with fatigue, stress, and anxiety. And when you consume these adaptogenic chemicals in these plants in non-toxic doses, not like going out there and eating an entire plant of ashwanga or something, it can help the body adapt and target specific stressors in your body, which is why they're called adaptogenic. Right. Now, stress, fatigue, anxiety, these are important things to pay attention to. But in our hyper stressful environments, if you're always on high alert, always stressed, you are uh, actually out of balance. And this is why having an adaptogenic ingredients in things you add to your body can actually be good because these chemicals can help the body temporarily return to balance by increasing or decreasing the rate of the chemical reactions to those stressors. So this helps you get back into that homeostasis, which is vital for our bodies to be stable and to function if they're optimal levels. What are some adaptogenic substances? Ashwagandha is one of them. This is one of the most common forms of adaptogenic herbs that people can take. It has a positive effect on immune, cardiovascular, endocrine, and nervous systems, helps to regulate the metabolism. It's an herbal remedy. Didn't we write about, uh, uh, what was it? Neurotropic herbs. What, what is, what is, what was that? I don't remember here. Wait. Neuro I have to look that up. Neurotonic herbs like chamomile, but I think that that is a similar thing to what an adaptogenic herb can be. But ashwagandha is one of those. Nootropic. Nootropic, yes, nootropic. It's positive for your neurosystem. Ashwagandha is one of those things, which is also a positive thing for your neurosystem. It's also an antioxidant, so it offers cellular protection. Another adaptogen that you and I both know a little bit more about now that we're drinking the Ticino is rhodiola, and that's an herb that can help improve performance in stressful situations. It can help calm your nerves and clear your mind, and that's why we like to drink our Ticino a lot, right? Yes, exactly. And then the third one in this article is American ginseng, which offers immune system support. It can help reduce inflammation. It's a type of ginseng that 
also boosts the nervous system and combat stress. What I like about this, so when we first started talking about whether or not this was a topic editorial would take on, I really raised the question because I kept saying the word adaptogenic. I kept being told to take adaptogenic things. And I felt like I was just following buzzwords as opposed to really understanding it. I knew that drinking the Ticino actually did make me feel calmer and less stressed. And I know that having things with magnesium tend to make my body feel more peaceful, but it just all felt kind of marketing Uh as opposed to actual solution based. And so what I love about this article is as a user of adaptogenic herbs, as a frequent consumer of adaptogenic teas, I can absolutely concur that that in concert with other lifestyle practices can reduce stress. And chronic stress and chronic inflammation is the leading cause of unwellness in the world. As we are getting sicker and more stressed and and as we're all now coming out of a chapter of such high intensity and stress, and who knows what the future will hold, but it's not going to be easy, but it's going to be different. Um, I love that this tool is emerging as a really reasonable tool at this time. Little solutions make a big difference. And uh, feeling good in your body and feeling good with how you are responding to the world around you, that's a big, important thing, right? All right. So other headlines on today's Optimist Daily include, speaking of feeling good, and speaking of answering questions about good lifestyle habits. Is flossing actually important? And how often should we do it? And so this this article about that. (laughs) (laughs) I've just told you the article. Yes, it's important. Yes. And why? So go read that article. How to be an ally, part one, performative allyship, and how to be an ally, part two, effective allyship. So this is moving from one being a performative ally, which maybe isn't so useful to being an effective ally. It's an interesting, important topic. How autonomous cars may predict the road behavior in the future. Oh, that's going to be an interesting one. What else, Summers? Well, an MIT team creates high quality paper thin loudspeaker. Here's how to prepare for allergy season. The formula of flow, how we get in the zone at work. And I love this one because it reminds me of Finding Nemo. Whale grumbles and whoops give a glimpse into their lives. That and much, much more, as always, is available on theoptimistdaily.com. Thank you all for listening to today's Optimist Daily Update. We promise to continue to share positive, solution-based stories with ideas on how you can participate in this changing world and ensure it is changing the good. We promise to cover the current events with accuracy, legitimate sources, and offer you the information needed most to chart new paths for all of us. Thanks so much for being here. If you have not already, please consider becoming an emissary on theoptimistdaily.com and for just $5 a month, you can get involved and be one of our financial supporters supporting reader-funded independent journalism. To support us for free, please share us on your social media feeds, forward stories to friends, and make sure to leave us a positive review on the podcast. That'll help us find new audience members and help us get everybody going in our Optimus Daily mission, which is to help everybody get connected to solving the biggest challenges with that problem-solving mindset. Let's keep the opportunity free for all you need it supported by those of us who can. Summers, that's it for today. All right, guys. Thanks. We'll be back tomorrow with more solutions.